Welcome to the Forking Healthy podcast, a place where two sisters have cheeky chats about everything natural health and wellness. I'm your host, Jenny Soder. I am also your host, Cheryl Berecki. Together, we hope to inspire, entertain, and motivate you with our knowledge and decades of experience in the natural health and fitness industry. So if you're ready, let's get Forkin' Healthy. Episode one, micros versus macros. What's the deal? Woo woo. We did it, everyone. We cracked the whip. We embraced our differences and we survived our first Forkin taping without actually killing each other. And on episode one of Forkin Healthy, we talk micros versus macros. What's the damn deal anyways? From contrasting personal experiences to body composition chatter and the game-changing elements of micronutrients, it is evident Jenny and I could literally talk for hours on this hot topic. Tune in for one of many, many nutrient discussions to come. Hello, everybody. So we thought we would do this really amazing thing to start out each of our Forkin Healthy episodes. We're calling it the Fast Forkin Five. Basically, I'm going to spit fire off five questions to Jenny, and she's going to answer them as quickly as possible. And she's going to do the same for me. Are you ready, Jenny? I have sweaty palms. I don't know (laughs) why, but. Okay, you got this. Question number one. What's the first thing that comes to mind when I say the word macros? Ew. Ew. (laughs) Number two. What's the hardest and easiest macro for you personally to hit? Fat, fat, fat. (laughs) Currently, what is your favorite food that fits well in your macros? Oh, sardines. <laughs> Number four, what is your favorite micro-rich, nutrient-dense food to see clients in their tracking? Ooh, I like a super greens powder. Nice one. And lastly, what food do you wish was micro and macro rich chips <laughs> eat a chips baby all right clean off those palms i'm ready for you okay we have we have overlap here we're always <laughs> gonna have some overlap Stop okay ready, ready. <laughs> if macros didn't matter what macro would you eat be eating all day long duh fat <laughs> ding ding twins what food did you fuel up on right before your photo shoot? Uh, carbohydrates, <laughs> Timbits. <laughs> How many Timbits were those? Uh, at least 24. Right. Awesome. If micros <laughs> didn't matter, what crap food product would you eat all day long? Oh, there's the overlap. Peanut butter. What macro do you always seem to be short on? Ooh, good one. None. (laughs) Never (laughs) short, ever. (laughs) And what do you eat before you do burpees and what is wrong with you? (laughs) Dates, always dates. Okay. Um, The second part, we'll we'll just leave that. (laughs) We'll leave that alone. Um, Yeah, love that. Looking forward to fast forking fives each episode for sure. And seeing how many questions we actually, because so everyone knows out there, we write these questions beforehand and we don't go over them. They're, they're, you know, a sneak peek. You got to get on it right away. And so we don't know that we actually write down questions that are the same. And that's probably going to happen in every episode. Yes, for sure. So let's jump in. Um, For those of the, those people out there that don't know, how do you describe what a macro is? For me, it's really um, simple and straightforward. There is three essential macros, fat, protein, carbs, though most people don't know there's four. So alcohol, but obviously we're not talking about that today. They're just the building blocks to energy uh, and balance. And micronutrients. Those are really the minerals, the vitamins, the nutrients. I consider those the game changer for full body health. What about you? 
How do you see those two? Yeah, I, I'm, you know, I, I would see them the same way. I think, you know, when we mention the words micro and macronutrients for a lot of people that have history behind them, like you and I do, especially my answer to like, ooh, <laughs> when, <laughs> when we talk about, or I hear the term macro, um, it, it takes on different definitions, but yes, that's totally what it is. You know, it's that fat, it's that carbohydrate and it's that protein you eat, but it's also that those vitamins and minerals that are in those foods. I, I, I always see it as like, people are so familiar with calories. Like it's such yeah. a, a word that's thrown out there and they, we forget to talk about what's comprised of those calories and um, macros and micros are just like breaking calories down the energy that you're putting in your body. It's not some wild concepts. I think people get really um, overwhelmed by the, by those terms. Don't you think people and we as society just complicate things in general? especially oh when God. it comes to health. <laughs> yeah. All the yeah. time. It's yeah. not rocket science. So I talk about that all the time with my clients. This is, it's not rocket science. I, I'm just guiding you back to some real foundational principles and, and ma macros and micros is just breaking those things down to um, get you closer to wherever you're trying to get to. hundred percent. So do you think it actually has to be about that micro versus macro or should it really be about quality of macros and micros that you're eating? Yeah, I think that's where you and I see eye to eye. I mean, we always joke that, you know, I'm more of the Mac, people see me more of the macro girl and you see you more of the micro girl. And um, even me, though I'm taller <laughs> and older and older, uh, <laughs> that um, th I mean, that's a differentiating uh, aspect for me as a macro specialist where I am faced all the time with this like world of macros that are like, you know, forking terrible, right? Mm -hmm. These coaches that are out there that focus just on one. And I yeah. think that is such a problem in the industry uh, or a hurdle in the industry as a whole that isn't getting people to this full body health place. Yeah, for sure. You know, and, and I mean, that's where I started was macro focus. It yeah, was so tell, tell, tell everyone about that. Like where did, let's talk about our personal experience there. Where did you, where did you start with macros and micros? Yeah. So my, um, past life, as I call it, um, my first foot in the door in the fitness industry and nu nutrition, I have a hard time saying it nutrition, just knowing what I know now and how I operate was, uh, preparing for fitness and figure competitions. And that was back in, no oh goodness, 2005, something like that. And, uh, I worked with several coaches throughout the years of me competing. And it was simply, here are your numbers, eat whatever you need to eat in order to make it fit. <laughs> If it fits your macros, you're good. Yeah. And I think that's still such a huge part of the industry. But though in saying that, I do notice some switch over time, especially in, mm -hmm. in competitors. Do you notice that world slowly changing? Um, or twofold? To, I don't, honestly. I, okay. I think there's a little bit of, of, of shifting. Um, as far as maybe we're not eating as much tilapia anymore, maybe we're <laughs> eating some other foods, but you know, I think that, um, it's still very much, listen, um, that approach works. Okay. It still worked on a, will it change my body composition? Yes. Um, but did it work in quotations? long-term? Absolutely not. And the reason is because the functionality of my body and how it was running was just breaking down because it had no micronutrients in it. Yeah. Sustain it sustainability. Food. Yeah. 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 Such a huge piece. And then, so where are you now with your whole micro macro, having started with the macro side of things, where, where do you see yourself now? Yeah. It's funny because I, we were at Costco this past weekend and I still have this like 
um, I still shiver when I walk by like the craft peanut butter and like all of the foods that I used to grab at Costco just to fit in my macros. And if I saw food and it was like, oh my God, it's all protein and it's no carbs. And that's awesome. Now, um, now I do mainly look at micronutrients. I, or I shouldn't say that I look at quality of food. And so I do check-ins with myself. I did one and you helped me to kind of, um, revisit macronutrients in a different light a few months ago, get some macros that I wanted to hit in order to achieve my goals. And my intention of going to that space and keeping more, keeping track of what I was eating was to get an idea on how I felt and what I was naturally consuming, which was a shitload of fat and not a lot of protein. And then I realized, okay, well, this has to shift if this is where I need to go. And so I shifted and then, um, now I know how that feels. And if I feel like I'm on on track, I leave it. I don't calculate things. I don't track it. And if I feel like I'm off and I'm not progressing, I will go back to it for a little bit. So that's where I'm at. Um, is that, did you start there? Did you start with macros? No, it is interesting that we, you know, we have overlap on so many things as sisters and having this history together, but then so many, um, different experiences, even though we've been side by side in so many of those experiences. So, I mean, you've been on my journey since day one. So, you know, that I was in a really unhealthy place in my sort of early twenties, where I would say that things really started, started for me. And for me, it was just about becoming conscious of um, micronutrients, nutrients as a whole that I was putting in my body because my body was rejecting anything that I was putting in it. And so, um, I needed to really pare things down and just focus on, you know, easy to digest foods for such a long time that for me, it was just this really, it was such a spectrum for me. It was about, um, switching, you know, to quality products on this spectrum, which you always taught me to use of this, you know, if you're eating, you know, craft dinner, don't go from craft dinner to zoodles. That's such a big spectrum, but can we make these slow and sustainable steps? So for me, it was all about micros at first and making those slow transitions and starting to just really listen to my body. So my experience, I don't even think at that point in time, I really even knew what micros and macros were. I just knew that my body was was really unhappy and that I needed to become like super aware. And when I tell my story, I often talk about um, it not being a sprint and I wasn't an over overnight um, change for me. It was this, this massive ultra marathon that I still consider myself to be on. And now it's, and as time went along, performance became a huge part of my life. And that's where macros came into for me, where I had focused so long on the types of foods and transitioning my life into sort of more of a healthy and holistic and body awareness stance that I didn't um, know if I was, um, you know, performing to my capabilities. And I didn't know if I was fueling the way that I could be or should be based on where I was at and what my goals were. And that's where macros came into my life and where I started to study, you know, women in specifically. And, um, and I was seeing a lot of that being in the um, CrossFit industry, being in the fitness industry, just seeing all these people that were coming in to their workouts, like not having eight and not having, you know, just under eating generally speaking was a huge thing that I was seeing a lot of where in the industry, we were talking a lot about people that were like overeating. And I became really passionate about teaching people to not be scared of carbohydrates, to not be scared of eating, but to like optimize their um, metabolism and body and performance and sleep and all of the things that, ma you know, balancing macros can help. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, I was quite opposite to you or that uh, macros came in for a different reason. And um, it was quality of food for me first. I love that you put, you know, and I just made a little note down here and on, on my neatly typed notes <laughs> for, <laughs> for our session as you scribble. And, um, I love that, you know, and maybe we can, maybe that is a pattern that comes up is that 
when people are looking to own in and focus on performance, macro macros are very important micros as well, obviously, but that's your focus within your business. And mine is more on the healing sense. And so micros in that regard are really, really, really important. Maybe, you know, just slightly above those macros and you're just slightly above uh, macros and I'm slightly above micros based on who we work with and what we do. I think what a lot of people underestimate is, and that I find even from a performance standpoint is yes, macros will, like you said before, um, it'll help you change your body composition um, to balance out what energy you are putting into your body in that those correct, you know, amounts. But Mm -hmm. um, what I find is that for that full body health and for uh, often people will plateau at some point in time, whether they're competing or a recreational athlete or not even active at all. If they're not focused on their micronutrients, they're going to to plateau, whether that be in their health or their, um, their body composition, their performance or whatever it be that they're going to hit a roadblock. They will only be able to take that so far. And you were able to take that to stage and change your body composition, but from a sustainability stance, you were, you weren't able to take it. Um, to the next level to last you a lifetime, right? You crash and burn, right? Which I see a ton of people do. That's why melding the two is so important to me because out there we live in a world where everyone just wants to, you know, get leaner or toned, like they like to say. And I just think it's, it's not possible without both of those things working in harmony. For sure. I think this is, you know, a larger topic. And we're coming up on, you know, that we want to keep these nice and short, just bite sizes, bite sizes, get it, like you bite. <laughs> <You're getting funny. laughs> but I think I, what I would love to talk about next time is like the, obviously when we eat, we're eating macronutrients, but there's also micronutrients in all of them, but how those micronutrients has have transitioned over the last 20 years. I think that's something we, we should want to, we want to talk about as well, but moving on from that, Cheryl, I know that this is a big focus in your business. So can you tell everyone how you support clients with macros and micros and what you do? Uh, Essentially our seven days to macro courses are uh, our gem of a course, which covers though it says macros in the title, it covers both because we break things down in how to start to target and count um, macros with high quality micros in mind. So we break everything down into bite-sized pieces and um, that course is, you know, seven days long and you learn about what are carbohydrates, what are quality carbohydrates, what are quality um, protein sources, what are quality fats and how do you put those pieces together? How do you build meals that are a little more balanced and what are the importance of the micro stance of those things? So we break all of those things into little pieces uh, and teach people to sort of do both simultaneously as opposed to just spinning out numbers and saying, go and do this because anyone can really do that that over time. And then of course, we always have our one-to-one nutrition coaching, which is customized and takes people to the next level. People that are really um, struggling to push both of those avenues in a really specific way than than we cover. But our seven days to macro course is really the the starting point for many people. What about yourself? How do you, how do you broach those things with clients? Um, So we have several different um, areas that we touch on this. Now I refer people to your business and to you for specific macros based on uh, performance and really getting down to the nitty gritty on the nutrition. So um, within my practice, one of the major services that I offer is something called bioscan assessments, where we take a look at the body to see how the organs and systems are running. And so on that level, and I do an assessment on your lifestyle, I can pick out some basic things that I see are potentially causing some weakness or stress in the body to those organs and say, okay, I think it's time to, you know, perhaps we work how you're consuming dairy or, and, and I give more general information that way. Um, but we also have a new, um, masterclass coming up, uh, in 2022 
And we have several of them that we'll be launching. But the first one is, is our Natural Living 101 Masterclass. And in there, we're talk, I talk about um, the foundations. It's really for people that are just realizing that the way they're eating food is not really doing anything for them. It's for the baseline, brand new people that want to live a more natural lifestyle, that want to take a look at the basics of food. So that's kind of how I support people. On that way. Lots of options out there. I'm looking forward to this being more of a, a series. I think you're really right. This macro micro um, piece is such so critical for all of our um, people out there and looking forward to talking more and getting into the nitty gritty. Totes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's one down the hatch. It was great to chat with you. So glad yes. that we can finally do this. And it was um, forking great. It was forking awesome. <laughs> See you next time. Next time. Thank you for tuning in to the Forking Healthy podcast. If you want to stay up to date on future podcasts, make sure you follow us on Spotify and subscribe to our YouTube channel. In order for us to get into more ear holes, we would love for you to take a moment to share this episode or leave us a review. That's it for now. Fork and rights. <laughs>